Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, August 15th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. Storms keep multiplying. We now have three to talk about in this video, so it may be a long one. I'll try to remember to put timestamps in the video description below so that you can jump between them. We've got Tropical Depression now, Grace, to the southwest of Puerto Rico. We have Tropical Storm Fred moving toward the Florida Panhandle, and we have Invest 96L, which is about to be a tropical cyclone as soon as the National Hurricane Center initiates advisories, likely sometime this evening. If we start with Fred first here, we're going to take a look at the zoomed in picture. There's Florida, and this system has finally become a little bit better organized here with a circulation evident in satellite imagery. It is a sheared storm, as we've talked about, flow out of the south aloft and south southwest is pushing most of the thunderstorm activity off to the east and north of where the center of circulation is somewhere in here. It's a little bit tilted with height. The newest burst of thunderstorms here is kind of curling around where the center is aloft in the mid-levels. The very surface center is right about there. So a little bit of a tilt with height, but overall a much more organized system than it has been really in any previous point in its life. And a general northward motion is expected to continue, bringing it somewhere into the western Florida panhandle on Monday. The track has been shifting a little bit to the left and to the right, kind of within this zone here, kind of settling in now on the area between Destin and Panama City on the most current National Hurricane Center forecast. This is the recon data from the plane that went in several hours before this video. Just to show that it was a weaker a few hours ago, the newest plane is just now entering and found that the pressure is maybe about five millibars or six millibars lower than it was in the prior uh, mission. And the strongest winds are on the northeast side of the circulation at about 45 miles per hour last, uh, during the last mission. The current one will reassess the winds to see if they've increased any. Some intensification is possible as this heads up toward the Florida Panhandle. As we mentioned, there is shear here due to this upper level ridge being offset a little bit to the east of where Fred is centered. So there is southerly flow aloft, keeping the vortex tilted a little bit northeastward with height. Uh, but since that tilt is not extreme at the moment, again, it's very close the center is to the mid-level center aloft. Uh, they're not too far apart. And so some intensification is still possible as this nears the coast and an increase to maximum winds of about 60 miles per hour is currently anticipated in the current National Hurricane Center forecast, which has settled in on this position of landfall in the Western Panhandle somewhere between Destin and Panama City on Monday afternoon or evening, though keep in mind that heavy weather will extend well to the northeast of the center and will arrive on the coastline in advance of this time and will arrive earlier on Monday morning or late tonight. You can see the wind field is mostly on the eastern side here in orange. Not a lot will be happening to the west. There is a watch to the Alabama border, but not expecting a lot to happen on the west side of the system. Again, rainfall here, kind of the main impact. There could be tropical storm force winds near the coastline at the point of landfall that could cause power outages and trees to fall, things of that nature. Uh, but flash flooding is usually a bigger concern for storms that are not hurricane intensity or higher and uh, six inches plus of rain are possible near the coastline according to this forecast from WPC and a swath of rain will continue across western Florida into eastern Alabama and into parts of Georgia and then the Appalachian region over the next few days as the storm progresses inland and moves northeastward. So stay safe everyone, be mindful of the hazards that storms can bring, even if they're not the strongest storm you've ever seen, they can still be dangerous, so do be safe and listen to your local officials. We're going to switch gears now to the other storm that we're currently tracking, Tropical Depression Grace, I keep wanting to say storm, it was Tropical Storm Grace yesterday, winds came down a little bit today to about 35 miles per hour, so this is now being labeled a Tropical Depression. And if we take a closer look at this storm, we've been talking over the last few days about how Grace has been fairly disorganized. It seems to be finally today starting to acquire a little bit more organization. We're seeing much more bubbling convection in this region southwest of Puerto Rico. And over the last few days, it's been hard to find this system. Not a lot of westerly wind to close off a circulation, even though it was a named storm. And it was really more like a tropical wave axis for the last 24 hours. Just in the last few hours before this recording, we've started to see a little bit more coalescing and congealing of circulation around this area here, starting to see a little bit of some banding wrapping in from the north side and then a hint of northwesterly wind here on visible satellite imagery. And we of course have data sets like radar and recon to look at to help us verify this. 
Radar is a little bit sloppy. The center is likely somewhere in this region, although it, the radar beam is quite high up at this point since it's coming from San Juan. And so this is only really showing us the mid-levels, uh, but things are pretty messy on the radar picture. Uh, hints of a mid-level trough extension to the northeast, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If we look at the recon data, we will see that the plane that's in there right now is seeing a weak weekly closed circulation potentially redeveloping around this point. There's Puerto Rico there. Strongest winds are on the northeast side at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. And this could become a tropical storm again soon if NHC assesses the winds to be at least 40 miles per hour. Uh, winds on the backside still quite weak here, but there are hints now of northwesterlies and southwesterlies on the south side of the circulation, indicating that this may indeed be a rotating rotating storm again and no longer a wave axis, but the pressure is still quite high at about 1,010 or 1,011 millibars, indicating that this is still overall a pretty weak system. Now, one of the interesting things about tracking this storm is similar to Fred on approach to Hispaniola, because there's been some shear, some disorganization, it's been hard to pin down exactly where the storm is going to track. We've had model forecasts that originally had anything from uh, Grace passing north of the islands entirely to passing directly over Hispaniola. And so far, the deviation over the last 24 hours has been more toward the southern side of those potential tracks. And you can see that if the center of circulation is here, well, I mean, we had a lot of models quite far away to the northeast at this time yesterday. So this is tracking more toward the south now and seems to be on track for some sort of direct interaction with southern Hispaniola. There is a chance now that it could sneak even fully south of the island, but it would take quite a feat to do that. One of the things I'm watching is if we look at the recon mission that was tasked with dropping upper level drop sons around the system, they dropped one at each one of these numbers in this uh, huge track looping around Grace and some of the drop sons that are up here to the northeast of Hispaniola to the north of where the surface center currently is. We can look at the profile from those and what we're seeing is that although we have easterly wind at the surface and you can see southerly wind at the top of the troposphere which is associated with the upper level cirrus outflow. You can see that streaming there maybe if you look closely the milky white clouds from south to north there. So when the drop sons were dropped there they found that southerly flow in that uh, in that sounding profile so you can see that here south southerly flow in the upper levels but below that there's flow out of the opposite direction the mid-level ridge that we talked about yesterday is generating a lot of northerly push in the mid-levels and what this is doing is kind of pressing down and trying to force the system to stay farther south and we talked about this being a possibility yesterday although yesterday it was in the context of whether this would pass over the islands or to the north of the islands it is within the realm of possibility that this still passes to the south of Hispaniola due to that northerly push, but it's really hard to predict that storms and it, storms are notoriously hard to track in this particular part of the Caribbean due to the complex flow and interaction with tall mountains that happens here. At the moment, the expectation is that this will likely pass over some part of Hispaniola over the next couple of days, and this would obviously cause a weakening of the system similar to what happened to Fred Although it's worth noting that Grace seems to have a larger envelope overall than Fred did. Fred was very tiny when it moved into the Dominican Republic, and so Fred was nearly destroyed entirely by passage over the island. Grace is a little bit larger and has a, a better chance of ultimately surviving the crossing of Hispaniola, but then it kind of depends uh, on whether it interacts directly with Cuba as well, as a, a double hit from both islands could cause Grace to dissipate entirely. The other thing we're going to be watching carefully is how the upper level flow evolves around Grace. And we talked in the last video about how we kind of have an upper level trough starting to dig in to the Bahamas and southwestern Atlantic, generating some southwesterly flow that will eventually start impacting Grace. Right now, the shear is pretty light, but as the storm continues to track toward the west-northwest, it will likely start interacting with this trough somewhat. Now, the farther south it tracks, the more likely it is to avoid some of the strongest shear, and conversely, if it goes farther north, it would encounter more shear. And as we look at the GFS forecast, we'll see where Grace currently is. Ball of purple contours here, again, on this particular kind of plot. The orange colors basically outline the upper level trough for you. So you can see the edge there between yellow and blue, similar to what we saw in the water vapor imagery. And now Grace is going to move toward that area over the next couple of days. I'll show you this track over Hispaniola on the GFS and then this tongue of orange kind of extending down here, a thinning trough but still creating some shear nonetheless over the system, which could aid in disrupting it. 
as it interacts with the mountains of Hispaniola and eastern Cuba, which will do most of the disruption. And by the time we get to Tuesday morning, there will be a big question mark here as to what grace looks like exactly. We have this interaction with the upper level trough, which is not very favorable looking, as well as eastern Cuba. Now, if the storm happens to pass more to the south of Cuba, then we could potentially have a more organized storm by this point. And similarly, if it happens to reform to the north of Cuba, then uh, it'll likely still be sheared and likely weaker at that point. One thing I showed you earlier on the radar picture is there does seem to be a little bit of mid-level troughing that is extending to the north and northeast of where the center currently is down here. And this is kind of borne out in the GFS forecast. If we actually go down here and look at the mid-level moisture plot, you'll see that there's kind of a, an elongated trough in the mid-levels. And while the surface trough is right about here to the south of Cuba on this model run, there's an extension to the northeast in the mid-levels, and so there is a possibility that the system tries to reform up to the north of the islands instead of tracking to the south of them. This is just a typical complexity with storms passing near or over these islands. It's very difficult to predict exactly due to the tall mountains and all the interactions that occur with thunderstorms and convection. And so this is something we'll just be watching over the next couple of days. A lot of question marks here until it gets past the islands and we can see what it looks like kind of in this area here, whether it's north or south of Cuba, will matter a lot. The good news, at least for, for those in the Bahamas, Florida, and western Cuba, is that the storm will likely be held down and, and kept weaker by this interaction. The bad news for Hispaniola and eastern Cuba, and potentially Jamaica, is that lots of heavy rain will occur regardless, and they are dealing, of course, with earthquake aftermath in Hispaniola right now. So a bad time to have a tropical system rolling through and causing more potential for mudslides and flooding. So that's going to be a severe impact regardless over the next few days. This is the current NHC forecast, which has shifted south. Like I talked about, a lot of models had this going even north of the islands uh, during the last couple of days, but that has not been happening so far. So the track is anticipated to go over Hispaniola now and potentially Cuba as well. You can see keeping it weak, all these letter Ds indicate tropical depression, which means winds are expected to remain less than 40 miles per hour. A great deal of uncertainty here, like I said, if this happens to not be over land quite as much or the wind shear doesn't impact grace quite as much as it does in some of the model forecasts, we could easily see a system that's more organized here if it happens to be over water by Tuesday and Wednesday. A lot of uncertainty there for now. And of course, that means uncertainty in the long range forecast as well. Right now, NHC has this coming back out over the Gulf of Mexico and eventually restrengthening some by later in the week. But that depends a lot on what happens leading up to that point. So there's not a whole lot I can tell you other than the fact that the steering pattern kind of implies that this will continue northwest. You can see on the GFS the envelope of mid-level rotation. This general troughiness is kind of moving along to the south of this big ridge in the mid-levels centered off the southeast U.S. coastline. And this is generally steering this kind of westward. And this could have an outcome anywhere from going into Central America if the storm deviates toward the south or just into the Gulf of Mexico and continuing west somewhere. You know, whether it ends up turning north or going west, we couldn't possibly tell you at this point. It's too far in the future. But in general, we're expecting either grace or its remnants to end up kind of in the southern Gulf of Mexico region by four or five days from now. So we'll be keeping a close eye on it. Got to get past the islands before we have a good clue at this point in time. No warnings out except for watches around Hispaniola. Rainfall, the primary threat here with grace in the short term. All right, we're going to switch back out to the big view, and we now have a third storm to discuss. This is Invest 96L, tiny thing up near uh, Bermuda, which is the island right here. I'll show you the zoomed in loop here as the sun sets on it. This is a tiny area of low pressure that just kind of came up out of nowhere in a sense, a little bit of a circulation that formed up here and then developed thunderstorms as it has been sinking southward, kind of a weird track. And because it has developed organized convection, this is likely meeting the definition of a tropical cyclone now, albeit still a weak one. The surface center is right about here. You can see the clear rotation on visible satellite imagery at the end of the loop. But there is some northerly shear pushing down on it. So you can see the north side is pretty devoid of thunderstorm activity. And the mid-level curling is right about here. So we're seeing a, a southward vortex tilt at the moment. And the key for this system over the next few days will be whether it can hold together despite this northerly pressure on it and whether the vortex will remain coherent or if the mid-level just gets pushed off entirely and decoupled from the surface center 
in which case the system will weaken and potentially fail to intensify. This is the water vapor satellite loop kind of showing this you know, westerly jet stream up here and then a little bit of a turn southward in the upper level flow there, creating that shear over 96L. And over the next few days, we'll be seeing this evolve. This is the GFS mid-level moisture plot. The closed contour here shows the surface center, and then you can see the mid-level wind barbs kind of show you the mid-level center decoupled away from the storm. Now, the GFS has not been representing the storm very well. It thinks it's weaker than it actually is because the storm just started forming. Uh, but this still gives you a good illustration of if the storm uh, decouples due to the shear, this is how it could dissipate very quickly. As we go forward on the GFS, the system continues sinking southward. There's the surface center, there's the mid-level center, so you can see there's still some tilt there. And eventually this tilt starts to grow. So by the time we get to Tuesday evening, the surface center is just west of Bermuda, but the mid-level center starts really shearing off toward the south here and just basically leaves the surface circulation behind in the dry air. And so we get, we get dissipation here. This would be a naked vortex without thunderstorms around it, and the mid-level center is totally gone to the southwest. And most models show this scenario playing out. However, models are struggling to represent this system right now. And since it's a little stronger than models think it is, there's a possibility that it is able to hang on despite the shear. And at that point, it would be a stronger system that would likely track farther south instead of looping back to the north like this. And we would have a stronger storm located southwest of Bermuda in a few days. Remains to be seen whether we'll get that. Uh, we'll have to track it for about a day and see how it does with the shear that's currently impacting it. This is the GFS upper level wind flow showing that by early Wednesday morning we still have that northeasterly flow due to this big ridge off of the southeast United States. That's what's causing the shear and that ridge extends down to the mid-levels so we have a ridge that is also steering the storm kind of southwestward like this and this is what causes that kind of odd track for a storm near Bermuda. Now eventually over time this ridge does weaken so if we go out to four or five days we start to see the ridge axis kind of move southward and then weaken so in theory if the storm held together we would see some sort of a looping track like this and where exactly it loops really depends on whether it holds together. If it's weaker it will be a shallower curl more toward the north early when the system decouples but if it holds together we'll likely see a deviation farther to the south due to that northerly shear direction kind of helping it push southward due to the convective asymmetry and we'd see a deeper curl here uh, but ultimately there's still some uncertainty given that the storm is just now forming and we see a varying amount of model guidance kind of showing that loop i don't have an official nhc forecast to show you yet we'll likely get one soon given that the system looks like a tropical cyclone already you can see that some models show a deeper track toward the west. This h wharf run showed a stronger storm and so you can see it goes west for longer and then the uh, the models that weaken the storm curl earlier. Bermuda's right here in the middle of that curl so we could potentially see some impacts from gusty winds and heavy rain on the island as the storm tracks by there slowly during the next two to three days. So be aware if you live in Bermuda we'll be tracking that closely over the next few days and see if it can survive or not during that time. That's it for now, everyone. Thanks for watching.